Welcome to the We Are VIP podcast. Each week, your host, Casey Haston, Director of Recruiting at VIP, will bring you valuable insights from thought leaders, introduce you to incredible companies, and bring you tips for landing your dream job from our team of executive recruiters at VIP. And now, Casey Haston. Welcome to the We Are VIP podcast, a podcast devoted to adding value to your career or candidate search, brought to you by VIP. I'm your host, Casey Haston, Executive Recruiter, Director of Recruiting with VIP, and your all-around hiring guru. And you know I love to bring you great topics for us to explore and discuss, and today is no different. So today we're going to be focusing on leadership, and I have brought a leadership expert to the table for you today. So let me tell you a little bit about our guest. Michael Tanner is the founder of Credible Leaders, a company that closes the lead closes the leadership skills gap left by formal education and on-the-job training with a passion to see you succeed. Michael's leadership journey began when he entered the United States Marine Corps at the age of 19, thank you for your service, which developed his maturity, discipline, and leadership capabilities. He then re-entered the corporate world as a software developer, where he was challenged to lead a small team without any real leadership training from his company. He then took it upon himself to obtain a master's degree in leadership. What a great leader, where he found his servant leadership style. He joins us today to share some of the insights he's learned along the way to help professionals strengthen their leadership skills. Thank you so much for joining us today. It seems like forever since we booked this. It, it does, Casey. Thanks so much for having me. It's, it's a real honor. And like you say, I've been, I've been anxious for this moment. So uh, thanks so much for having me. And, and when you read the bio and you said 19 when I went into the Marine Corps, I just, wow, I, I can barely remember being 19 now. Really? I, I say the yeah. same. I think 19 and yeah. I'm just like, oh, man, I don't think that I want to That sounds forever again. ago. I know, right? Yes. And I don't know if it you does. were like this at 19, but I thought I knew everything. Of course, I, I did know everything, and then I figured out later I didn't. <laughs> that is so awesome. So before we get started, I really, really love to connect the dots on how I meet people, because I think that's so important. Right. And you came by way of Dr. Pillay, the music man. That's right, the profitable happiness. Yeah, Dr. Yes. Pillay and I are in a mastermind group, and I believe you were on his podcast, I was on his podcast, uh, and then we connected via LinkedIn. Yeah. And as you said, that, that was some time ago. So uh, anxiously awaiting and getting on the podcast. So <laughs> thrilled to be here. That is so awesome. I do want to bring up one other thing that I think just really um, kind of made me fall in love with you because it was just so amazing. And that I, when I looked at your website, well, there's two things. Okay. One is the mm -hmm. quote that you have on there and I have it written down here. And I love this because I think I shared with you, I'm going right. to coaching school right now, but it's right. so perfect. Don't have mm -hmm. a coach, your goals aren't big enough, or you aren't serious about them. That's right. I mean, you know, if you think about it, who has a, a big goal that they don't then have a coach to help them achieve that goal? If you think, you know, the easy analogy is athletics and sports. Uh, what athlete trying to achieve a gold medal in the Olympics or the Super Bowl or whatever it might be doesn't have a coach? They actually have many coaches. And it doesn't matter, you know, what corporate world you're in. If you've got a really big goal, you need a coach to get there. I could not agree more. And as I'm going through coaching school, I'm thinking, in, in getting coached going through coaching school, I'm like, oh, my gosh, right. I've missed out on so much by not mm -hmm. engaging on a regular basis with coaches. Right. So, yeah, yeah I, it's, it's so overlooked by so many, but it's so valuable to success. It is so valuable. I will tell you, I have one client here in the Dallas area that is actually sending some of their HR team to coaching school to come back mm -hmm, and implement mm -hmm. that coaching style within the organization. Oh, so important in, a, in, a, in a, that ability to, to coach. Uh, it, it's not just a natural talent. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you have to be, in, in my opinion, you have to be trained in it and, and, and you have to exercise the, that that training as well and so uh, in an hr world that is super super talent to have i and i'm getting kind of off on a tangent about coaching but i will tell you this is about as far from my nature as can get doing sure. coaching yeah. i mean i'm I, really I totally good to look I, at it i totally understand yes <laughs> so the other thing that i really love about your website and i i normally i'd have you give this at the end but i want you to go ahead and tell the reader or the mm -hmm. listeners what how to get to your website 
So you can just find me at credibleleaders.com. Uh, I have a lot of things that, that are going on that I'm doing. I have, a, I have an online community. I have a podcast and YouTube uh, videos and so forth. But you can find links to all of that from credibleleaders.com. Okay. And what I want to encourage everybody to go check out is your virtual bookshelf. Right, right. Yes. I love that. I could not agree more with your choices on books you need to read. And I just, yeah. guys, you have to check it out. It's amazing. In fact, I want one on my website now. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge reader. Um, now, I, I will be transparent and say that um, some people consider this cheating, but I do listen to audiobooks as well. I, I, I mean, I, I read physical books also, obviously, but I'm just a huge believer that you've got to constantly be reading um, to increase whatever talent or skills or knowledge uh, that, uh, that is relevant to you. You've got to stay relevant by reading. What are you reading right now? So I just actually finished a book uh, by, uh, his name is, uh, and, and I'll show it here actually, it's uh, Ryan Hawk, uh, okay. and it's called uh, Welcome to Management. Um, and uh, it's his first book. Uh, and, and I'll just be honest, initially I, I saw it and I thought, eh, I don't really like that because I certainly prefer to use terms like leadership rather than management mm -hmm. or supervisor or something like that. Uh, but he, he addresses that in the book. It's a really, really good book. and I do highly recommend it. And it will be no doubt on the bookshelf uh, soon. I am reading a book right now that's not really, well, I read like two or three at a time. So I just finished Malcolm Gladwell's mm -hmm. uh, Talking to Strangers. If you've not read that, mm -hmm. did, it, mm -hmm. did, did you listen to it? I did, yes. Yeah, I that listened to that amazing. sometime back. Yeah. yeah, that was so good. But I'm reading Hidden Messages in Water. Have you heard oh, of that? I'm not familiar with that one. You'll have no, to check not familiar it out. With that it's one. pretty stinking cool. Pretty stinking All right, I'll cool. do that. I'll do that. And it's more about positive affirmations and oh, good. sharing yeah. those positive messages. But he shows mm -hmm. it through water. It, it's, I'm not going to spoil okay. it for you. All right. you got to check it out. All right. Out, I'll, so. I'll check that out because I, I am a big affirmations guy. I do believe in that. It's a part of uh, my morning routine. And, and so I'm a, I'm a certain believer of that. So I'll, I'll check it out. You, you you will be blown away when you see the pictures. It's amazing. So anyway, okay, so back to you. So All your right. whole thing is leadership. And you just said you prefer the term leaders, not manage and all that kind of stuff. So what does a leader mean right. to you? Well, so, I mean, I, I start with this. I have this working definition of leadership. And I'll, I'll give you my definition and then kind of break it down. And certainly a leader is someone who applies this definition. But my definition of leadership is this influencing others towards a shared goal. So let me break that down. First of all, there's got to be others involved, right? I, I, I hear the argument that, well, you know, the first form of leadership is leading yourself. And, and yeah, I get that argument. And, and I believe leading self-discipline, leading yourself, it's important. But fact is, if no one's following you, you're not a leader, right? So the definition has to include others. Um, but then it, it has to have a goal. There has to be a purpose, right? So you you have to have some reason, some purpose that you're influencing these people towards a, a goal, right? And then I use th that first word, I use that very strategically, influencing others. Because influence, the word influence there, it carries with it this notion of a willingness, right? People are willingly following you, right? You, you have influence over them. so And they're giving you that in some type of willing manner. It's not uh, fear-based. It's not obligation-based. You know, it's not even authority-based. It's I'm willing to follow you, right? So I use the, the word influence there very strategically. And then you're moving towards, it has to be a shared goal. And in my definition, the word shared there, it has two parts to it. First of all, shared is it's communicated, right? If I'm going to be a good leader, I, I have to tell you what the goal is. I have to communicate to you and in multiple different ways. And all the cliches about communication apply here. You have to say it seven different times, seven different ways and, and all that. So the first part of shared is I've got to communicate it to you. But the second part of shared in that definition is, is this notion that we are in this together, right? I'm sharing, even though I'm the leader, quote the leader, I'm sharing in the moving towards the goal with the team, right? So I'm in the trenches with them. And so, again, it gives this notion of we are in this together. I'm not, you know, sitting up in my high castle and, and, and 
barking out orders and, and mandates and, and calling that leadership. No, and instead, I'm in there with you. And as a team, as a group, and as your leader, we're going to accomplish this goal. So influencing others towards a shared goal. And then anybody that takes on that definition and attempts to influence others towards a shared goal, I would call them a leader. Love it. Love it. So what are three traits do you think uh, that makes of a successful leader? Mm. So, so such an important question. And, and to answer this question, I'm going to go back to that bookshelf that we talked about. And one of my favorite books on that bookshelf is Pat Lencioni's book, Ideal Team Player. Mm -hmm. I love that book. Um, and so I would submit to you that if someone's going to be an ideal team player, um, then, or if someone's going to be a, a great leader, then they're going to also be an ideal team player, right? So I would just, I would say that the three traits that are described in, in Pat Lencioni's book describe a great leader. And the first one is humble. You've got to be humble. E ego is, in my opinion, ego is the biggest downfall of any leader. And, and we can talk more about that, but you have to, as a leader, you've got to be humble. Uh, you can't lord over your team members, your title or your position or your authority. Um, you have to be someone willing to listen to your people and, and hear their ideas. You have to be willing to, from those that you're leading, you have to be willing to receive and hear from them feedback. Sometimes you, you won't like that feedback. You won't like to hear that feedback, but you've got to be humble enough to listen and hear uh, that from your people. Uh, and then the second attribute that Pat Lynch only talks about in that book is hungry. So you have to be hungry, which means you're not satisfied with the status quo. You're not satisfied with as you are today. Well, in that book, he describes hungry as, you know, I'm not satisfied with, with me right now, right? I want to be better. I want to do more, that kind of thing. But at, for a leader, I would, I would modify that slightly and say it's important for a leader to be hungry for the team or for the people, right? It, it's not a selfish hunger. I want to be a better leader. Rather, it's a hunger of, I want this team to be better. I want, the, I want this group of people to work better together. I want this group of people to achieve more, succeed even more, right? So it, it's a team hunger, if you will. And then thirdly, uh, Pat Lencioni uses the word smart. I prefer to use the word aware. Uh, and this is, it, it's not an IQ. It's not a smart in terms of IQ or intelligence, but rather in my definition, it's an awareness of how I interact with other people and how that does or doesn't influence them, right? So it, how, you know, what, what are my personality traits, for instance? And how does my communication due to my personality traits impact people, right? Um, I used to be in a, if you're familiar with the disc assessment, I mm -hmm. used to be a high D and, and I would communicate in bullet points, boom, boom, boom. I just very direct, very firm and just bullet points I'm communicating. And I didn't know at the time, but I, I eventually became aware that I was perceived as always being angry or frustrated because I was just matter of fact, bullet point communication. Right. And, and I wasn't aware that my personality traits were coming across to my team members that way. And so I would say that third attribute of a strong leader is you have to be self-aware. You have to be aware of how all your actions, all your thoughts and, and communications and so forth, how do they impact and influence the team for good or for bad? Those are awesome, awesome points. And I love uh, Pat Lencioni. He's, didn't he also write the five dysfunctions of a team? He did. Yeah. He's got, he has several yeah. books that are great. I, I love the five dysfunctions as well. That's I thought that was him. Um, mm -hmm. So let's, let's go back to 19 year old Michael and let's talk <laughs> right. about what is one lesson you learned in the Marine Corps that had the biggest impact on mm -hmm. your professional life? You know, I, I think I would, I would say this. I, I mean, I learned a lot of, uh, of important leadership lessons in the Marine Corps that, that frankly, a lot of people just wouldn't believe or, or, or certainly don't get. I always say that leadership, it's not about rank or position or title. And, and, and people don't necessarily equate that to a, a military type leadership. You know, they just feel like, well, you know, somebody that outranks you said do it and therefore you do it. Uh, there's some element of that. I don't deny that. But 
I learned a lot of things uh, around leadership is, is really based on relationship and, and, you know, caring for your people and, and providing for your people. But I think the most important lesson that I learned while I was in the Marine Corps, and I, and I saw this play out many, many times uh, on the positive and the negative side of things, and that is that success of a team, it rises or falls on leadership. It's, it's all on leadership. Um, there's a great book. It's on the bookshelf as well called Extreme Ownership. It's written by J uh, Jocko Willink and Leif Babin. I knew you were going to And here's the way, out. yeah, here's the way they say it. Um, they say it this way. There are no bad teams. There are only bad leaders, right? And, and, and I would, I would agree with that. It is, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's true that the success of a team is going to rise or fall on the leader, on, on leadership. Uh, you see it in the sport, sports world. I'm a huge sports fan. And you see, you, you know, you see this team that's just stacked with superstars. Just, man, they just incredibly high team budget, and they're just stacked with these superstars, but they can't seem to enjoy success. And that's typically because the coach on the sideline, uh, he's not a very good leader. He's not a very good coach. Or those superstars that are on the court or on the field they're not very good on the field leaders. So while you've got this rock star team, you can't enjoy success. And it's because of lack of leadership. On the flip side of that, you can take an average or a mediocre team, and, you know, a bunch of no names, throw a great leader in there, and suddenly they're going to start uh, enjoying some, some success. So you see analogies of that all over the place. But that, for me, that's probably the biggest thing that uh, as a 19, 20, 21 year old that I, I started recognizing in the Marine Corps, it really lands on the shoulders of leadership, the success of a team. Well, and just a little background on Jocko and Leif. Is it Leif or Leif? Leif Babbage. Uh, Leif, yes. Le okay. Leif Babbage. Okay. So um, they were, they served on the same Navy SEALs team, correct? Correct. Yes. And Jocko was the one that led it. And I believe he's pretty popular on Instagram, isn't he? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's huge. So they were both. Um, uh, so if I, if I remember right, Leif was, a was a platoon commander, uh, in, um, uh, well, they were in Ramadi. Um, they were in Iraq and Afghanistan. I think they were deployed twice together. Um, and then Jocko was the task unit commander. So Jocko was the superior there in, in that case. Uh, and as they both exited, as they both retired from, uh, the Navy SEALs, that they started a company called Echelon Front, which is a, cons a leadership consulting company. Um, and they they've written a few books now. Uh, and yeah, it's just a, it's a phenomenal organization teaching leadership. I, I wholeheartedly subscribe to, to pretty much everything that they teach. I subscribe to everything but the five o'clock club. <laughs> well, there is that. Yes. <laughs> um, so Credible Leaders is a company that helps invest in leadership training when traditional job training falls short. Um, mm -hmm. How can businesses better identify emerging leaders and invest in them? Well, great question. And, and, and the first thing I would say here is just identify the need to invest in leadership development of your people. Uh, again, go back to that, that what I said about uh, learning in the Marine Corps. Success of a team, it rises or falls on leadership. If I'm a company and I'm going to promote someone into a leadership position, why on earth would I leave it to chance that that team that that person is leading is going to succeed? Why would I just leave that to chance? But so many businesses, so many companies, they totally overlook this need to provide leadership training for those they're promoting into leadership. You, you see it all. I mean, the, the probably the most prominent analogy is a sales team. So you have a salesman who is a rock star. He's just knocking it out of the park. I mean, his his sales are through the roof. I mean, he could live on a third of his commission alone. And they promote him to sales manager, and everything falls apart. The wheels just fall off the bus. The the numbers of every other salesman comes down. The numbers of, of that manager himself they start to come down, and it's because while he's a phenomenal, uh, you know, individual contributor, he's not a leader. And and if that company doesn't invest in that individual and and train them in leadership, uh, then they're just leaving it to chance. Uh, and it's it was much in in my corporate world. It was much my experience that I I had to learn it on my own because it was so overlooked. But then how do you 
once you once you start to invest in leadership development for your 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 people, I'm very much um, a, a fan of delegate outcomes or objectives to people before you promote them. Uh, I'm a fan of this. I want to make sure that you're doing the job before I promote you to that job. I don't want to promote you into a job and think to myself, I wonder if he can do it. I wonder if she can do it. Instead, I want to put you in a position where I know you can do it because you've already been doing it. And so if I'm going to train up and teach up, uh, you know, future leaders, I have to start delegating some of those outcomes and some of those ob uh, objectives to them and letting them accomplish that. Therefore, I know they can do it and then I can pro promote them into a, a leadership position. But I'm not delegating, I don't mean delegating tasks, but you know, here's an outcome that we need. Go lead people to do that. Or here's an objective we need to do. Go, here's a mission we need. Go and lead people to do that. And once I see them leading people, then I know I can promote them to that. Oh, that's beautiful. That is really beautiful. Um, how can someone that wants a leadership role position them position themselves for one? So I, you know, I had that mm -hmm. exact same problem in my last company because I, I did want mm -hmm. a leadership role and I was having a very difficult time breaking through that glass ceiling. Mm. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, you know, anytime someone asks me this, I, I, I really get philosophical first, right? Um, and what I would say to someone is, before you really worry about how do you position yourself to be a leader, ask yourself, why do you want to be a leader? You know, a, a lot of people don't recognize this, but in the Marine Corps, uh, when you're enlisting into the Marine Corps, uh, if for whatever reason you want to get out, it's really, really hard. Really, really hard. Um, you've made the commitment to them. They've made a commitment to you. If you're going to try to bail out of that, it's really, really hard until you sign up for leadership in the Marine Corps. Getting out of leadership in the Marine Corps is extremely easy. Extreme. All you have to do is say, I want out, and they will boot you out. And that's because they want people that want to be a leader. Right? If you don't want to be a leader, they don't want you in there, right? And so first of all, in this question of how do you position yourself to be a leader, ask yourself, why do you want to be a leader? Because if the reason you want to be a leader is about power or authority or title or recognition or even compensation, well, then you're going to position yourself through like political posturing and, and things like that mm -hmm. in order to get, right? You're going to put yourself in front of decision makers as much as you can. And, and you're, you're going to do things like that, right? Um, that's a way into leadership. I don't deny that. I, I believe it's a short lived leadership, but it is certainly a way into leadership. But if your real reason for wanting to be a leader is to see the success of a team, right? You, you want to help you want to lead, you want to teach, you want to coach a group of people into success or, or achieving a goal. If that is your reason for wanting to be a leader, then you're going to position yourself through influencing those other people towards that shared goal. You're not going to worry about, does my title give me authority? You're not going to worry about, am I doing this in front of the boss that's making the decision to promote me? All you're going to worry about is, how do I influence this group of people, how do I influence this team towards successfully achieving the goal that we have? And, and that's what you're going to do if you're going to position yourself to be a leader that is all about seeing the success of the team. That is just absolutely beautiful. And I think that I could sit here and talk to you all day about leadership because I love your take on it. I mean, it's really, I think it's unique. I think it's a different perspective on leadership than what we're normally right. exposed to. You know, the fact that the very fact that you say, ask yourself why first, I think sets right. you it, apart. It, it's so important. I mean, it, it, you know, if you're one of those leaders that, um, if you feel like your people are always questioning your motives or your people are always, you know, second guessing you or, you, you feel like you, you have this perception that people think you're, you're behaving in some underhanded way or something like that. You should go back and ask yourself, why am I a leader? Because it's likely that your people believe you're a leader because you enjoy the power or the authority or the position or the recognition and, and so forth. Uh, and, and that might be true. And if it is, you've got to decide, do you want to continue to be a leader or not? Um, but I would submit to you, longevity and leadership 
is when your main purpose, your main desire for being a leader is you want to see that team win. You know, I, and just really quickly, there's an assessment that I use when I'm hiring. It's called the fit assessment mm -hmm. or the talent selfie by iWorkZone. Mm -hmm. And that was mm -hmm. one of the things because it has like four different quadrants that it measures. And of course, I was mm -hmm. the guinea pig because I'm a assessment junkie, you know. Of course, yes, yes. <laughs> and so I took this and the first quadrant is more like your Myers-Briggs, your external behaviors mm -hmm. or your strengths finders. Right. And then the next few areas um, are like, are you active passive? Are you... Um, are you right. um, more people or task oriented and are you? And then the last section mm -hmm. is all about how you're internally wired. Well, mm -hmm. I don't think I need to tell you I'm very competitive, competitive. Every sure. assessment yep. I take competitive competitions right there at the top. And Same when, here, yes. <laughs> when my managing partner looked at my results and was talking to the consultant, he, he said, how can she lead a team if she's so competitive? And mm. what the consultant brought out was that According to my internal wiring, I love people so much that I don't want to win individually. I want to win right. as a team. Yes. It, t totally. I can totally resonate with that. I mean, and, and kind of my leadership story is when I got into software development, I wanted the company to give me a problem to solve and I could sit down and write the software to solve that problem. And every time I did that, I wanted a bigger problem and then a bigger problem and then a bigger problem. And until that problem that they gave me was so large I couldn't do it on my own I needed a team to do that and they gave me a team and that's the moment for me that it switched from I didn't want to be the one solving the big problem I enjoyed watching those other people solve the big problem uh, and so for me leadership it, it's all about I want to see that team win and, and as I said earlier I'm a, I'm a huge sports fan uh, and so yeah if you have a basketball team it's it's easy to to see the basketball team is winning but my children, I have three teenagers, and all three of them play tennis. And tennis is a, is both a team and an individual sport. So you may be out there playing on the court as an individual, but you're also playing as a team. And, you know, my daughter would come running up to me. I, I, I knew this because I sat and watched the match, of course, but she would run up to me and say, hey, hey Dad, I, I won the match. Great. Now, how's the rest of your team doing? Right? Because mm -hmm. that's what fuels me is how is the team doing? Uh, I'm just, I mean, I'm so energized by team success and not, uh, not worried at all about my own. I love that. So tell me about your podcast, the, uh, rookie, sure. podca rookie leaders podcast, who does it speak right. to and who can learn from listening to it? Yeah. So the rookie leaders podcast, I mean, it's, uh, it's for anyone that's new to leadership or, uh, you know, it's looking to get into leadership. Maybe you're not even there yet, but you're looking to get into leadership or you're rather new to leadership. But also I'd say it's for those that you feel like in some way you've kind of stalled out in your leadership. Maybe you've been leading a small team for some time now and, and you feel like you've gotten kind of stale in that, or, or there's been no progress in that, uh, that type of thing. Or, or maybe, you, you know, you're about to your leadership's about to expand. You've got a little four man team, but you know, the company's about to give you, you know, four more team members or something like that. Uh, the format is, uh, it's both monologue, me just sharing leadership content as well as interview and discussions with other leaders that I bring onto the podcast. And, uh, yeah, you can find it pretty much in any of the podcast directories, just search for rookie leaders podcast. And I'm sure you'll find it. That is perfect. I'm going to have to check that out. I have like so many podcasts that I listen to that I just, right. I can't listen to Same. all of them. It kills me. Same so, here. Same here. We are almost out of time. I don't know if you can even believe that. This is just flowing. I know. It goes so fast. Waited so long and then it goes so fast. <laughs> but I do want to ask you our VIP questions. We asked sure, all yeah, our okay. guests and I cannot wait to hear your answers. So, you <laughs> know, right. I found myself doing this to one of my clients today. I started asking our VIP questions. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not in studio right now. <laughs> I'm not on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were chosen to be one of the first colonists on Mars, what three things or people would you take with you? All right. So, well, the easy one here, but I'm not going to stick with this one. I, I'm a, I'm a huge family man. My family means everything in the world to me. I have three teenagers and my wife of 26 years. And, and so the easy thing to, for me to say to you, well, I'm going to take my family with me. But um, I have a feeling you're looking for a little deeper thought um, at this question than just that. So uh, I've got a couple couple that I would take. Um, well, first of all, I would take uh, 
uh, I would take my grandfather. Um, now, me being the first colonist on Mars is rather fictional. So taking my grandfather, since he's already passed, is fictional as well. But I would take him for this reason. My granddad, he grew up through uh, the Great Depression as a, as a farmer uh, and uh, through uh, World War II and, and just an incredibly resourceful man. I mean, he just he could make something out of nothing and it didn't matter what the topic was. So if I'm on Mars, uh, I need someone that's got the resourcefulness that, that my granddad had. Um, and then secondly, next to him, uh, a la uh, the movie, The Martian, uh, I would take a world renowned botanist, right? Because uh, we're colonists on uh, Mars it's going to be pretty important that we can grow some food, that we can sustain ourselves. And so I would definitely take me a good botanist with me to, uh, to try to um, grow some food. And then I'd take with me on top of that, whatever kind of tools and mechanisms that he, that botanist told me I needed to take so that we could sustain ourselves with food. So that, that's, that's the three, the two people and, and, and the tools that I would take with me. You did put a lot of thought into that. <laughs> I did. I did. I put a lot of thought into that. You know, just in case, just in case I am the first person on, on Mars. That's awesome. So what is one thing you do each morning to set your day up for success? Ah, so I, I alluded to this earlier a little bit. Uh, uh, I have a pretty, pretty regimented uh, morning routine. Um, and I believe it, uh, you know, it, it really gets me set up for the day. Uh, and I follow Hal Elrod's uh, Miracle Morning. Uh, yes. I follow it in a slightly different order, but I follow it for the most part. You know what? I'm just speaking this out right now. As much as I talk about Hal Elrod and the Miracle Morning on this podcast, he has to come on. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, he definitely. Uh, you should, you should, uh, he's his, his miracle morning stuff. And then the miracle equation, the, the follow-up book to that, they're both phenomenal. Um, you know, I, like I said, I, I do it in a slightly different order. Me too. Uh, I do the exercise first, which for me, morning exercise is really just kind of stretches and, and so forth. And then I, use, I do silence after that, which is usually me with a cup of coffee. So you know, the only noise in my silence routine is me sipping hot coffee. Uh, and then I follow that up right up with affirmations and, and visualization of the day, how I want the day going. Mm -hmm. uh, and then reading and writing, reading and journaling uh, is, is the last parts of my morning routine. All total takes half hour, 45 minutes, maybe. I knew there was a reason we got along so well. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot in common uh, as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Uh, far be it that, that the two of us get into some kind of competitive uh, adventure here because it could go ugly. <laughs> it could go uh, we're ugly too, real we're fast. too competitive. <laughs> so, my final question if your mm -hmm. life's work was being summarized in a uh, news article, what would the headline be? So, so this one was so tough for me um, because. You know, I, I write blog articles and podcast episodes, and probably the most difficult part of that whole workflow for me is coming up with a good title for whatever the content or whatever the lesson I'm teaching. So this one was really, really a tough one for me. Uh, but, you know, as I was thinking through this one, um, I was interviewed a, a good while back on a podcast, and, and the gentleman asked me, he said, what is your definition of success? And, you know, he kind of caught me off guard with it. And I was thinking through it and I said, well, you know what? I think for me, here's, here would be my definition of success. If, if I can serve other people in the most efficient manner possible to me, that's success. I know you're a big fan of Bob Berg and, and the go-giver. Um, I'm, I, I consider myself a go-giver. I, I just want to serve people. And so I think my headline would be something like this, uh, a life devoted to serving others in the most efficient manner possible, right? The, the, the operation side of me comes out and, and, and I want to serve others, but I got to do it in, you know, in a manner that's the most efficient way possible. I totally agree. And yes, there's the go-giver mentioned for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, you got to get Bob Berg back on the podcast, right? He's I been there before. I do need to get him back on. He was amazing. <laughs> so, and that was another one of those times, just speak it out. It'll happen. Mm -hmm. So you just wait. Um, so other so than I, your it website, sounds like we need to we need to reach out to Pat Lincioni and Jocko yes, Willink and Leif yes. Babin and now Elrod and now Bob Berg. Okay. 
let's just make a list and we'll just agree on it yes. together. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So other than your website, credibleleaders.com, is there another way people can get in touch with you? Well, you can certainly find links to everything that I do there. So that's definitely the, the, uh, the best place to start. I have an online community and you can see links to that at credibleleaders.com. Uh, I do a lot of YouTube videos and, and of course the rookie leaders podcast, you can find links to that. So that's kind of the home base. You can find my email address and all that there as well. So that's kind of the home base. Just head over to credibleleaders.com and you'll find me there. I assure you. And you're pretty active on LinkedIn as well, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. For, for, for the most part, you know, promoting stuff, but then also just engaging with folks. I mean, yeah. uh, that's how you and I meet and, and uh, end up on podcasts, but really just engaging with folks too. As I said, I just, I just want to serve others. And, and if it's answering a question in LinkedIn or serving up podcast content, whatever it might be, I, I want to serve others. Well, this has been great information today and I so appreciate your time. And I think you, in this little space, you have served others very, very well. So I just have one last Thanks. thing to say to you, Michael. Sure. You are a VIP. <laughs> Thanks so much. I, I really appreciate the, the, the time, Casey, and just the honor it is to share with your audience. I, I certainly hope it served them in some way well. I'm sure it did. And that's a wrap for today. Join us next week here on the We Are VIP podcast. We'd love to know how we can help you be a VIP. To find out more, log on to wearevip.com.